Hello, uh, today I want to talk about introversion. Um, I just want to address some stereotypes and um, just kind of ex uh, explain what it means to me to be an introvert and how I view it. Um, this is uh, for every anyone who's really into typology, any of the systems, um, this video is probably going to be very obvious. It's more so directed at those who are just kind of getting into this kind of stuff and are still. Um, accepting, uh, you know, those common statements and stereotypes that are found in pop psychology and um, just in media in general, um, you know, who haven't quite uh, dug past that surface stuff. Um, yeah, and I'm, I'm not trying to be an ass or anything. I just, I was there too once and uh, I just wanted to make a video about just the stuff that I've come to realize. Um, so, yeah. Okay, so... Um, introversion, what it's not. Um, I'm first going to just address, well, I think I need to mention, I mean, um, Susan Cain and her book Quiet. I'm sure everyone's heard of it. Uh, it's been a huge hit. And um, this book seems to have made it a bit trendy to be an introvert. Um, you know, it's kind of, um, or has cashed in on a trend, a previous trend. Um, but, you know, it's it portrays introverts as... Um, you know, the quiet, socially awkward, um, odd ones out. Um, yeah, and I just think this is a dangerous stereotype because, uh, first of all, uh, introverts are not, uh, they're, we're not the odd ones out. Um, I was, if you look at uh, the Myers Briggs website, they have some stats about distribution of, uh, distributions of sensing, intuitive, feeling, thinking, like all, you know, all the dichotomies, um, how they exist, how many there are of each in the population, and introversion and extroversion is actually 50-50, you know, it varies here and there slightly, but in general it's 50-50, so um, introverts cannot be considered the odd ones out if they are half of the population. Um, yeah, so where I think that comes from is these terms are just becoming more common, and so um, there are a lot of people who are introverted, um, you know, there's always been people who are introverted and they just didn't have a term for it. And, uh, um, yeah, I mean, they just, you know, an introvert can appear like an extrovert. You know, it's just because everyone has to adapt socially. It doesn't mean that, um, you know, it's not the same as being socially awkward or something. There can be socially awkward extroverts just as well as introverts. There can be shy extroverts just as well as introverts. Um, so yeah, that whole, I just, that whole, I mean, I haven't read the book, so, but I'm just basing off this off of a TED talk I saw Susan Cain give and just, um, all the, just the many articles I've seen mentioning this kind of stuff online. Um, you know, they make it seem like introversion is a kind of handicap and it's, and it can't be when it's 50% of the population. Um, yeah, sorry, I'm just looking at my notes here. Um, yeah, um, another stereotype that I seem to sometimes come across is people, you know, saying that introverts don't like people, and again, this is going to be very obvious for people who are more into this stuff, but, um, uh, we're a social species, and, uh, we're a social species, and if you don't like people, it's not because you're an introvert, um, it's probably because you're depressed or anxious or have some other kind of mental health issue going on. Um, introverts like people. I mean, we should all like people to an extent. That doesn't mean you like every person or you like people in large groups. But, um, you shouldn't be, if you're using introversion as, um, as, uh, you know, as like a handicap or as an excuse that, you know, you don't have to be social or something, you're only hurting yourself because everyone needs a fair bit of social contact in order to stay happy. You know, it's just, it's the way our species is, is hardwired, you know, unless you're like a sociopath or something. Um, maybe they even need social contact, I don't know. Um, yeah, so, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, um... I mean, these, I can see where these stereotypes come from, like the socially awkwardness and social awkwardness, the shyness, um, you know, the, you know, not wanting to spend as much time around people. Like, I can see how they, they, where they've come from, you know, from the differences, clearly. But um, it's just important not to generalize these things, I think, because it's just like the easy but lazy way of explaining differences in people. 
and um, it's just not helping anyone when we perpetuate these generalizations. Um, I think it's much better just to stick to what we know and what are the facts, what we believe to be the facts. Um, yeah, I mean, okay, I'm just going to move on. <laughs> Five minutes. Okay, so what I think introversion does mean, simply, it means that your most preferred function is an introverted one, you know, and I'm, I'm basing this off of Myers-Briggs typology, which is based off Jungian uh, psychology, um, you know, eight cognitive functions, these are the ones that these people have come up with and have, uh, you know, might not be all, of, you know, are they're doing good for us, so I'm behind these eight cognitive functions. Um, and yeah, you know, your order is going to, it's always going to be um, your stack order. It's always going to be introvert, extrovert, introvert, extroverted, um, you know, perceiving, judging, perceiving, judging, or, you know, the reverse orders. It's going to be one of those um, because everyone needs to somehow bring in information and then they need to organize it in some kind of way. And um, I'm going to talk about um, being, what being, what being an uh, introvert means to me as an INFP, which means my uh, main function is a judging function. It's, um, you know, introverted feeling. And it's making uh, value judgments, you know, it's organizing all the information that my, well, mostly my uh, extrovert intuition brings in. I'm sure there are some other functions that are always going to come into play, but generally I receive most of my information through my extroverted intuition. And then generally my introverted feeling is, you know, divvying up that information and, class and organizing it, um, making judgments, you know, what I can do with just this like raw data. Um, yeah, so um, because because um, my first function is an introverted one, I think it just means that, um, you know, I, I, I almost need, <laughs> see, I don't want to say the word quiet because I'm going back to the Susan Cain thing, but um, I mean, I, I do need to be able to focus internally in order to do what I do best, you know what I mean? Like, in order to stay in touch with that part, that is that makes up the core of you know my personality in this in this way and, and through in this Myers Briggs way. Um, I need to be able to process internally and um, and uh, a lot of a uh, sensory stimuli when lots of things are going on externally I can't do that and then I don't feel you know in touch with myself and I don't feel happy <clears throat> so. You know, I think that's where it comes from, uh, you know, the introverts preferring more quiet, more quietness than extroverts. Um, you know, yeah, and, uh, um, but yeah, of course, um, you know, some people call it amb ambiversion, you know, but I, I think that, you know, that's just, you know, looking at everything from a grand scale, yes, everybody is an, an, an ambivert because everybody has introverted and extroverted functions. But I don't see the point in using that term because it's just it's just again, it's just pop psychology. It doesn't it that's not relating to the Myers Briggs, which this stuff is based off of that it's like messing it all up. I don't know. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, so uh, everyone can even introverts will be able to appear as extroverts. and I think especially as you um age, you get better at using your other functions. Um, so I can appear to be an extrovert. I can be very focused in just collecting since my uh, my second function is extrovert intuition and it's perceiving function. I can just get into that state where I'm very focused in just pulling in information. I'm just perceiving. I'm not judging. I'm just collecting data. I'm looking around and you know, uh, since it's an intuitive function, I'm interpreting what I'm saying. I'm not looking at things in a in a very like a uh, concrete way, exactly. But I'm still just living in that moment of pulling things in, perceiving, not making judgments. I can do that, you know, and um, I can do that for you know a good few hours. Um, you know, be and it, I can be very social. It causes me to be very playful and outgoing. And uh, yes, I can do that, you know. Um, but the thing is, because it's not my preferred function, it tires me, and I can only do it for so long. <laughs> so uh, then after I've done it for a long time, I start, you know, I go from being, it's really funny because it's like, I go from being this like really kind of wacky, like just, um, you know, totally present and excitable person, um, and then all of a sudden I'm just like wonk, <laughs> and I'm just like, I, I just, you know, I know I've got my like stone face back on, and I'm just, uh, just kind of like, oh, you know, I just look bored because I just feel drained by all of it, and I need to go revert back to my introverted uh, function. Um, 
but yeah, for me, that's just what it means to be an introvert. It's, um, it's just about uh, sensory stimuli, um, you know, too much of it. And I can't use my, my introverted function and that's my preferred function. Most of the time I want to be using that. Um, you know, whereas if you were an extrovert, it's different, you know, most of the time you want to be, uh, you know, doing things that involve your attention to be external, you know, whether you're an extrovert sensor, you know, you're looking at concrete things. <laughs> I'm not so good. I'm not an extrovert sensor. Or I don't really use extrovert sensing. So, but, uh, you know, you're present in the external world, you know, you're living outside your house, you're, uh, I mean, outside your house, outside your head, head is kind of like a house. Um, yeah, if you're, you know, an extrovert, uh, intuitive, a dominant extrovert, intuitive, you're, you want to be always, again, perceiving that information, you know, bringing it in, that's your, that's the mess, that's the best thing for you to be doing, you feel most at ease when you're doing that, it's the most natural to you, um, but again, you know, sometimes even extroverts, they need to be, uh, they need to do introverted things, like if you're a dominant extroverted intuitive, that means your first function is a perceiving function, and you know everybody needs to also make judgments on the information they perceive. You don't just gather information and let it just like float around in your head. You need to make judgments about it. It needs to be organized. Um, so their second function is their introvert function. There's an introverted feeling. Sometimes they need to go back and they use their introverted feeling and just be quiet and make their judgments and organize their information. You know, it just it goes both ways. It's just about a balance. You know, some like one function more than the other. Um, I hope I didn't ramble too long about that. Uh, yeah, okay, so um, going back to I thinking, uh, me, uh, my thinking that this introversion extroversion is just about sensory uh, stimuli, sensitivity, um, I, was, I found this article, I don't have a link or anything, sorry, I'm not that organized, but I found this article in a peer-reviewed journal in my university's catalog from the 70s, um, and what they did was they uh, had a population of people and they um, first gave them the Myers-Briggs type indicator to see which ones were introverts and which ones were extroverts. So they divvied up the groups and then they gave uh, each group, they somehow managed, I can't remember how, but they somehow, uh, you know, got them hooked up so that they could measure their autonomic arousal or their cortical arousal. So that's just, you know, um, your nerves, you know, it's like the tension in your body. I'm not, I'm, I can't explain it further. I could, it's just going to get messy if I try. Um, yeah, autonomic arousal. And, uh, yeah, okay, so they gave both groups the same level of sensory stimuli. I think in this study it was sound. So, uh, you know, certain decibel of sound. Let's say it's here. Okay, and um, the average of, they found the average of the uh, introvert group, their, their measured cortical arousal, let's say it's up here. So, you know, they're quite stimulated by that, that, uh, the, uh, that sound stimuli. Now, with the same stand, stand, ugh, sound stimuli, they found that the extroverts, um, on average, ha showed much lower cortical arousal. Um, you know, which basically means, let's, you know, let's say uh, introverts up here, and this is a, you know, comfortable level of a uh, cortical arousal to be at, you know, this is enjoyable level. Well, they're, they're getting there with this much stimuli, but the extroverts aren't there yet. And so you need to crank this up in order for the extroverts to reach that happy level of cortical arousal. Um, so for me, that's, that's how I think of it. It's just, uh, different. It's introverts are more sensitive and, um, I don't know, maybe this is, I don't think this is just me, but I find that um, as introvert, I'm, I'm always the first person to jump when like the phone rings or a loud sound occurs. Like I'm very, I'm jumpy and then, um, or someone like sneaks up on me even. It's just, I, I just, um, I seem more sensitive to that kind of stuff than other people. Um, yeah, I'd like some feedback on that. Maybe that's not consistent. It could just be me. I'm not sure. But I, it seems to make sense to me in terms of this, like, cortical arousal uh, sensitivity. Um, yeah, so if you think of introversion, extroversion this way, uh, it starts in, like, you can go back to the stereotypes and see where they came from, but still see that the stereotypes in themselves are just, they're, they're painting the wrong picture. You know, they've got, like, this little bit of, got a little bit of facts, and they're just kind of skewing them. Like, you know, you hear another stereotype is you know, introverts are, you know, more meaningful and they like to have more in-depth in conversations. They don't like small talk than extroverts. 
Um, but, you know, extroverts are just as capable of having meaningful conversations. They're just as intelligent. They're just as, they have just as much of that, like, human essence. They're not as, they're not more superficial, not more superficial. I mean, yes, some people are more superficial in that way than other people, but it has nothing to do with whether they're an introvert or an extrovert. You could be an introvert and be that way. Um, the whole small talk thing, I think, it just comes from the fact that extroverts are more easily I'm not I don't want to say bored but they have they need more uh, stimuli from the outside world in order to re reach that pleasant amount of uh, cortical arousal so maybe small talk is just their way of bringing their 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 arousal up you know what I mean like it's just it's they're just they're not doing it because to them that conversation is is meaningful or they don't think small talk is like meaningful or something where the introvert's going oh you think this is interesting you know what i mean it's not like that it's just they have different they have different reasons for doing it um they like to be more engaged externally and so they're just trying to enjoy themselves you know whereas the introvert um is just better at sitting by themselves and being quiet for longer periods because their dominant, most preferred function is an internal function. You know, they can entertain themselves inside their head more. Um, yeah, this is the longest video I've ever done. I hope I didn't ramble too much. Um, but yeah, those are just my views, kind of, I guess it was on extroversion as well as introversion. Um, give me some feedback, you know. Um, hmm... Yeah, I mean, introverts and extroverts, they're both great. <laughs> you know, there's about equal amounts in the population, so, you know, they're not so different. <laughs> just, we do, like, this whole, yes, uh, and if you're, you know, it's just like this introvert pride thing, like, people are so proud to be an introvert, you know, it's like, it's just all hogwash, you know, it doesn't matter what you are, it's just what you happen to be, and you don't need to be proud of it, it's not a handicap. So, yeah. Okay, that's all.